morning. Oh, well, I think I might have been a little bit early there. Good morning, Tina Mitchell, your local mortgage expert and your host of Coffee with a Superstar. My show is for real estate agents with real estate agents. So you can hear from the best of the best what they're doing and how they're doing it. And each week I invite you right behind the scenes of their business so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. And I'm so excited this morning to have a conversation with Gina Medea and she is here with Windermere. Gia, Gina, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for inviting me to participate. I'm yeah, looking forward to it. Absolutely. And a little bit about Gina. Uh, after 25 years in corporate America, including 20 at J.P. Morgan Chase and five years at Microsoft, Gina decided to pursue her passion and transition into the amazing real estate industry. In her second year in business, she sold nearly five million in volume. Fifty. Oh, that's what I meant to say, 50. 50, it does have a zero there, 50 million. Thank you for the clarification in that. 50 million in volume in her second year. And she was the company's top local, uh, top producer locally and number four nationwide. And again, that was her second year in the industry and definitely why I've invited her to be my copy with a superstar. Her background in training and development helps her explain the often complex aspects of the real estate transactions to our clients, enabling them to make informed decisions with clarity and confidence. As a former competitive athlete, she brings the discipline and the competition competitive spirit to every interaction, fiercely advocating for her clients while nature nurturing productive relationships with the other brokers to ensure a win-win and positive outcome. I love that um, bio and I love uh, you know being an, uh, an athlete mm -hmm. because really in our past experiences, what we do helps us to bring to who we are today, correct? Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. yeah. So Gina, what would you credit your success to in the real estate space and especially your success so early transi transitioning into industry that you had no knowledge of? Yeah, no, that's a good question. And obviously it was scary after 25 years in corporate America to take that leap of faith because that's all I knew. Um, but I would say um, my success was attributed to my fearless nature. And I just um, always have that confidence in myself to know that whatever I put my mind to, I'll be able to achieve. And real estate was no different. I had the luxury while I was still working at Microsoft to be able to take the courses online to, to get my license. Um, and then when the time came, uh, just to kind of take that leap of faith and know that there was nothing that I couldn't achieve if I didn't surround myself with capable people and have that faith. Yeah, so Gina, you must also have positive conversations with yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, most days. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep, yep. But I, you know, I think what you're getting at, and it's true that's so important, is, is one's mindset. And yes. how much what happens in your head manifests in your day to day and Absolutely. your success. Right? Yeah. So, you know, listen to that day because the mindset is a huge part of it and the conversations you're having with yourself uh, throughout the day are a huge part of that. So listen to what you're telling yourself and if you find yourself um, not having that confidence in the conversations that you're having with yourself, take a step back and really uh, practice because it's like everything else you really need to create that space for yourself in order to portray that out in any industry that you're doing and so that would be the first step if you find yourself having that lack of confidence is just to create opportunities and routines for yourself where you can build up your confidence uh, because I think it really it knowledge is powerful without a doubt but I think more powerful is the confidence that you have in your ability right now today no matter where you're at and if you're two years in the industry you do not have the knowledge you don't have the knowledge that somebody that's been in the industry for 20 25 years has but obviously knowledge was not something that took you, um, that was a um, uh, negative for you, but your mindset and your confidence that you had allowed you to make it through that time where you had to gain your knowledge. Because no, 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 no matter how much schooling and education that you take in your industry until you're actually out there and you're doing business, that's where the knowledge really comes from, correct? Oh, for sure, and it's that old um, adage that they say, right, you can be book smart, yes. right, but not street smart, right? Yes. And so, kind of similar to what you're saying, I really feel strongly that 25 years in corporate America was such a gift in helping me transition to real estate, because in terms of managing um, processes or understanding yes. like the interpersonal dynamics of different style types, etc., cetera, um, was very helpful, and just the, the mechanics of how to write a contract uh -huh. are just the mechanics of how to write a contract, right? Yes. 
and I could have someone double check my work. Yes. Um, but it was really how to negotiate um, with the opposing agent and yeah. helping your clients understand the dynamics of the current situation and inform them about the options that they had so they could yes. make a decision that was right for them. Yes. All that came from corporate America. It didn't Got come it. from my online real estate yeah. school. Right? Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So Gina, let's talk about a challenge that you've had uh, in the recent or not recent that you were over able to overcome that challenge and how did you overcome it and what lesson did you take away from that challenge? Um, so probably the uh, the example that I'll share with you has nothing to do with my business. Okay. Okay. So it's um, a, a personal um, example where uh, just last year I got the dreaded phone call um, from my father saying that my mother was in the hospital. And it was a little bit of a panic situation because she had a brain bleed wow. and they had no idea why. So um, took the first flight out all the way back east to Nantucket and uh, actually she'd been choppered from Nantucket to Mass General um, and showed up and she had just gotten out of surgery and you know the whole tubes and the whole nine yards. Yeah. Um, but it was super scary because you know I was plugging along trying to be my my high performing self with real estate nice. and with deals and clients and 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 you know making money and helping people change their lives with home ownership and all of a sudden none of that mattered. Yes. It was like how quickly can I get there? Yes. Thank God for clear by the way, that new um, thing at the airport where you can use your eyes or your fingerprints. Oh. I showed yeah. up at four thirty in the morning for uh -huh. six o'clock flight and it was like a three hour Disney line just to yeah. get on a plane. So anyway, um, the lesson I took away from there is that as important as my business is, yeah. right, I have to find times to be able to balance that because family yes. is really yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. And then the same year, my daughter relocated to the East Coast. Uh -huh. So all of a sudden, I'm half of an empty nester. And yes. so, again, reinforcing yeah. that family is important and making sure we make time to. So, and that happened, that. and that was when? This was, uh, what year were we in? 2020? So, yeah. 2019. Okay. Yeah. So, you've been able to maintain your success and to have a new look in the importance of having a balanced life and, and really being able to focus your time in personal things as well as your business. So what changed that you were able to maintain your success and have a new look on, on life and the importance of things that are important <laughs> to you in life? Well, there are some that might argue that not a lot changed because I'm still uh -huh. very much a workaholic. Yes, okay. right. Um, I mean, I still, uh, I, I still work like a, like a crazy person because you know it's my clients yes. um, needs that are on the line um, but I do make more time um, to for example take care of my health and go to the gym mm -hmm. to make sure that we have you know date nights and yes. and kind of hold certain um, pockets of time and experiences yeah. sacred because yeah. You can't get them back, yes. and it's important to, to nurture those. Yeah. So well, and I was kind of hoping that you would say that, Gina, because um, I always say that I work really hard and I play really hard, and yes. how I do that is because, and sometimes you're in a grind where you're just grinding it out, but that's a really temporary scenario, whether it's a grind in your business or it's a really grind focus because there's something happening in, in your family, and so that, you know, you're gonna go through those stages. But for the most part, you can work hard and you can enjoy life hard. Mm -hmm. If just what you said is you really have these pockets of time, time block on your calendar when you're doing these things because the business doesn't have to be taken care of all the time right this second. It just needs to be taken care of with a sense of urgency. And a sense of urgency doesn't mean that one day is not more time spent in, in family. Right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We're a very similar mindset. Don't I we? know we are. Well, that's why I was so excited to interview you. <laughs> we definitely do. So, uh, Gina, let's talk about marketing. I know that you do a lot of marketing uh, things in your business, but what would be something that you could share with the agents that are listening today on a great marketing tip for them to take their business? Great question, and I will start with the fact that since we're on a Facebook Live interview, I'm venturing to guess that those agents that are tuning in are sort of familiar with and comfortable in the social media space. Yeah. And so one of the things that I started doing um, was a lot of social media advertising, whether Instagram posts or Facebook posts. I've done several um, professional videos, either showcasing a neighborhood or um, providing real estate tips, whether seller tips or buyer's yeah. tips that I push out um, on Facebook and Google through online advertising. But to complement that, because here's sort of another tip, right? Like it's nice to have the professional um, video and the music and all that, but also at the end of the day, I think it's really important to be authentic. And so in addition mm -hmm. to that 
fancy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do um, opportunities like this, right? Yes. This is the real me. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. And I'll do um, occasional Facebook posts as well, video posts that are just direct to um, the audience about what I see happening in the market or mm -hmm. maybe something funny that I observed because I think yeah. it's nice to balance those yeah. aspects. And, I, and it's so important and don't get overwhelmed with social media because you don't have to be on all the platforms. Pick what works well for you. Uh, we're not even on Instagram and I'm a top producer in my local market but we do a lot on Facebook and not to say that there's um, one platform that's better than another but pick a platform, work a platform. Uh, as Gina said, be authentic and you want to have a, um, you know, like you've got your business card out there that was obviously oh, professional. Video business, card, video, yeah. video business card. If you YouTube uh, Gina Medea, uh, you'll see her, you know, what I'm talking about. But, um, and that's obviously a professional uh, done video. So having that mix and getting that one professional video that you're going to make an investment in, but your daily and your activity that you're having, you really want it, you don't want it to be professional. You want it to be, you know, just with your camera across or uh, your camera and your computer and talking. And for a real estate agent, getting out in the field and doing things out in the field, um, Bomb Bomb's a really great uh, video platform that you can use. And, you know, so just get yourself out there. And being on video is really important in this time, correct? Yeah, I think people expect that. They do. Right. So I think it's important to find a way to be comfortable in that space. Yes. And it doesn't have to be every day, every minute, but just yeah. here and there. Yes. And you get more comfortable as time goes on. You do. And I, um, uh, it's quite a few years ago, but I talk about this in my coaching program. Um, that you know, I went to an, a, an event, it was the Agent Re Reboot event that they, I don't know if they still have it every mm -hmm. year now, but it's where they bring a lot of people in talking about the new technology and things that are going on and you know, there's 500 people that are sitting in the audience and one of the speakers came up and, and he says, if you're in the audience right now and you've seen yourself on video and you don't like the way you look, get over it. <laughs> because that's how you look face to face. And normally when I'm in a big group of people and the speaker's on the top of the stage and he says something, you know, if you're doing this, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm doing that. But this was not one of those occasions. I felt like there was a spotlight on me. I was the only person that was in the entire audience. The speaker was looking right at me yep. because I had literally just had that experience maybe a month before this event oh where I saw myself on video. I didn't like the fact that my neck moves out a lot. My mouth gets crooked, you know, all of these things that we have that and of course wrinkles on all of that but that's a given for you know everybody but it was my unique things that I did that were different than what I saw other people on video mm. that horrified me and when I went to the event and I thought wow this is what I do when I'm face to face I'm just not used to seeing myself so embrace who you are get on video have fun with it and people fall in love with your uniqueness not your perfection right Let's hope so. Yeah, <laughs> and if not, they're not our right clients. Right. Regina and I are here to tell you that we are absolutely not perfect, perfect, as you can see, and we both do a high amount of volume, So, and we're out on video a lot. So obviously, people are connecting with us. It's the right clients that connect with you, and that's really what we're trying to accomplish, correct? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about uh, taking your business to the next level. If there's an agent that's listening today and they really want to take that next step to up their game, whether they're a new agent or they're an established agent in the market, what would you advise them to do when we drop off our Facebook Live? Probably number one thing, get out of your comfort zone because if you're in your comfort zone, you're not growing. And if you don't grow, well then nothing's gonna change, right? So um, whether that be um, volunteering to host more open houses and perfecting your ability to, to gain buyers in that experience, mm -hmm. or even just asking for help. I think in this industry in particular, and I've noticed this, right, it can be very dog-eat-dog -dog and everyone's in it for themselves and they got their whole thing and they don't wanna necessarily um, give away their secrets. I have no secrets. In yes. fact, I'm mentoring two new agents in my office because I think it's important to help them be successful. Yes. Um, but ask, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to find those people who are willing to um, share ideas and to brainstorm ideas. Ideas, I like that. Ideas, I love that. that. Yeah, but just get out of your comfort yes. zone. Try something new. Um, stick with it for a while to see whether or not it works for you and if it's something you want to keep in your repertoire. But I think really it is about not being afraid to ask for help and aligning yourself with people who share your desire for success and are willing to support you on that journey. Yeah, great advice. And when you're asking for help, and I think you know this is what you're uh, what you're saying is you need to be. Um, 
really careful in who you're asking help for because the reality is, is there's a one percentile that are killing it and no matter what industry we're talking yeah. about there's a 20 percent that are doing 80 percent of the volume and then there's 80 percent that are getting 20 percent of the business so majority of people out there you don't want to take in their perspective of what's working and what's not working because they're not getting the results that you want so you really and that's that's the why behind this show mm -hmm. is I really wanted to talk with the back of my radio show if you want to showcase your business on my radio show that's open for anybody uh, this space is for the best of the best it's for um, agents that are making a difference in the market and based on volume that they're doing and so um, you really want to search out and ask for help for people that are doing the business that you want to do right mm -hmm. and I want to go back to a comment that you made on sharing secrets because the reality is, is, and Gina says she doesn't have any secrets, the reality of it is, is as a top producer, what Gina's doing in the real estate space, what I'm doing in the mortgage space, they're not our brilliant ideas. You know, I say nobody comes up with their own brilliant idea. It's all stemmed from getting motivated and inspired by other people. The brilliance of it is making it your own. So there is no secrets out there. You can give everything that you have. The reality is most people are not gonna take action. That's why 20, 80% are doing 20% of the business. But those that are gonna take action, they're gonna make it their own uniqueness and they're gonna find the answer somewhere, whether it comes from you. And you'll notice in, with top producers, the reason that they get there is because of their willingness to share and to give back to their community and give back to their, uh, their peers. And um, so they're gonna be open to give you everything that they have. And so really search out for those people that are doing great things. That's so right? important, right? It's a life-changing yeah, opportunity. Yeah. So Gina, what do you see uh, next for you? <laughs> Where's my, your, your journey? You're not gonna take you. Exactly, the big important stuff. All right. <laughs> Whatever you feel like sharing. <sighs> Well, you know, what What I hope to do um, is to continue to be successful for several more years, but back to that notion of, you know, what's really important, yeah. um, I, I want to be able to um, retire and spend time with my family and travel the world. Mm -hmm. But between now and then, um, trying to balance the real estate world, I've become much more involved in my community. Yes. Um, I'm a board member on um, a local organization called Alpha Assisted Living Services that does provide um, housing to people with developmental and cognitive disabilities um, and I love the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, I'm also heavily involved in King County Association of Realtors on their um, political action subcommittee. Okay. So um, lobbying is all make a difference. Yeah. Right? Things like affordable housing, etc. Yes, yes. um, and just you know really spending time in that space because I can be a workaholic and yeah. do all that but at the end of the day it's family it's um, friends and it is community and I'm yeah. trying to spend a lot more time in that space. Okay, alrighty. Favorite book? Um, well, I'll tell you about a recent business book that I read okay. and you're gonna totally not be surprised because it's called The Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> Which <laughs> she asked me it was okay to say this on Facebook Live, and I said sure. absolutely. <laughs> and the ceiling did not contain it. Yeah, it's all good. So you, it might surprise you to know that I was drawn to the title just uh -huh. because that's a of course common word in my vernacular. <laughs> Behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Right. Never to other uh -huh. um, agents. But um, what was interesting is that you know it talks about how nothing important that is achieved is gained without some level of risk or perceived um, negative yes. consequences. Yeah. Right, I mean, that's like obvious, obvious right? Uh -huh. um, but the, the trick in life is to not give up because once you let go of that fear, yeah. you become unstoppable, yeah. right? And it's true, and I think back on my life and you know, my competitive gymnastics and bodybuilding and uh -huh. winning those competitions, making the transition, even from banking to tech, uh -huh. First, let me tell you something. It's crazy. <laughs> a little bit of a difference. A little bit. Yeah. 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 Heavily regulated, so anything yes. goes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then again, from um, uh, corporate America in, into real estate. Yeah. I just don't give up. I know yes. that I can be successful, yeah. and in turn, I can help my clients be successful. Exactly. Regardless of what's happening in the market, and yeah. um, just having that confidence. So, yeah. Yeah. That's and a good if, you know, if we're um, so take a look at that book. If we're uh, if we're not our best self, we can't be best for others. Yeah. And so just kind of going back to how we started our conversation this morning in, in you know, really your mindset. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice if you think about um, 
a self-defense class. I once went to a self-defense class and I thought I was going there just to learn some really cool moves, but that really is not what a self-defense class is about. A self-defense class is about putting you in the most real situation that they possibly can, which they did because Ooh. they were using F-bombs, slamming up at us again, padded walls and, you know, rape scenarios and the whole Ooh. nine yards. Yes. It's scary. But the reason why they did that is because they wanted to get us into the most real situation. Why? Mm -hmm. So that they could bring up that I'm getting goosebumps all over. So that they could bring up that that um, that adrenaline to the closest reality of what the adrenaline would be live if we actually got intact on the street. And the reason wow. why is because until you have that adrenaline, you can't learn how to use that adrenaline, adrenaline to fight back if you haven't experienced it and practiced through that process. Because the reality is, is the adrenaline is like your fear. The adrenaline's like your tragic things that happen in life. Um, all of that is adrenaline. And your adrenaline, when you're in that moment, it's like a mother trying to pick up a child that's underneath a car. She yeah. has this superhuman strength that if the child wasn't there, she wouldn't be able to lift the car. But with her child there, she has that strength because of what would happen if she doesn't lift it. And so when you're in those, those adrenaline spots, you have more um, strength than you ever would in any normal moment that that doesn't happen but you have to learn how to use that adrenaline to your benefit otherwise it's going to take you down and you're gonna freeze yeah but so I took so much away from that self-defense class um, and so everything that I look at is the more pain sorrow um, fear any of that stuff that comes up I really reach for because it's gonna happen it happens to all of us and we all have those times of insecurity we all have those times of um, you know not at our best confidence level or whatever that is but whenever that happens I draw from that strength that I know that I have in that moment that I will never have in a moment that's a normal and a natural yeah. moment for me and there's beautiful things that come out of that another thing that I want to mention on that note as well is what I've experienced in life is once you actually embrace that moment it takes you to a higher place it's kind of like education mm -hmm. when you get educated and you study on something you never go backwards yeah. you continue to get a little bit smarter a little bit smarter a little bit smarter and it's the same thing with working with your inner self that once you take yourself to a next level you'll never go backwards and then you continue to push yourself higher and higher where that's where the magical things happen for us that's where we're able to um, conquer anything that comes up and so um, I think it's a it's a beautiful a beautiful thing it is I like that whole notion of self-growth and continual yeah. evolution and I'm gonna screw this up because I don't remember who this is attributed to but uh -huh. there's that quote that says you never step in the same river twice Okay. And I think that's a lot like with yeah. personal growth, right? Yes. I mean, you're still you're the same skin, brain, yes. face, but your insides and, and how you look at the world and interact with it is forever changed and yeah. more positive. Forever. Yeah, so true. Well, on that note, we've got a couple minutes left, so oh, I'll yeah. do a shout out um, for speaking on personal growth. If you go to live your dream now retreat dot com. Live your dream now retreat dot com. Um, 2008 the financial meltdown is when I did a lot of personal growth and we were all in a space that we needed to figure it out and that was the best space for me ever in my entire career not just in mortgage but through the entire uh, time that I've been working because of the devastation that brought but yeah. with an intentional decision because of the self-defense class that I had taken uh -huh. about two years before that uh, I was determined to figure out what to do in that space and to really work with it and so all of my exercises I share a lot of those on uh, my personal exercises that I've had the biggest growth that I've had in my entire life because of the financial meltdown um, it's really it's a space for women a space to come together for uh, support of each other the challenges will definitely the exercises that I put together will definitely challenge you but when embracing them, they're life changing and it's a beautiful retreat. So um, we've got two tickets left for this one that's coming up in April. So take a look at it. I would love to spend that time with you. It's at my house. It's really intimate and um, there's definitely a lot of tears in a good way, which means that there's breakthrough and there's a lot of, a lot of laughter. And so um, reach out if you uh, want to grab a spot for that. So any uh, final shout out that you want to do, Gina, as we're wrapping up our time here together? Wow, now I'm on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I love putting people on the spot. <laughs> Any yeah. last final uh, words of wisdom that you have, Gina? I, I think being authentic, yeah. um, staying positive, yeah. um, and just doing your best for your clients and not taking failure personally because yes. like, I'm about to hit the 
submit button on a property that's probably got 20 offers on it and I may lose, but it's not the other agent's fault, right? Yes. It's just, so still be kind to each other when yeah. we're out there because the opposing agent today that I lose to may be the one that brings me an offer tomorrow. So yes. it's, I'm telling you what you already know. Productive relationships make the world go round. Yeah, so and don't people know that. things, but that doesn't mean that they're actually embracing it and then doing them. And so hearing it multiple times, yeah. At some point in time, it connects and people can actually make it their own. And on that note, too, because we do have a couple more minutes, um, because I think this ties in really greatly um, with, you know, really our job as experts in our space is we have to educate people what's going on. And I've said this before, um, but if you're not getting the results that you want, it's almost always in how you're communicating your message. So going back to your dialogue and really thinking about how you're delivering that message. My um, uh, formula for a, a great message is a message that's confident, which we've talked about today, because you can't, your words don't lead. Your confidence level and how you deliver those words lead. Words are important, but confidence has to be there as well. So a formula is confident, powerful, and to the point. Get rid of all the buffer words, all the things that you don't need to say and just really get to the point in your message. So I wanted to bring that up because there's a, there's change that happens in, in every market and every environment. And so how are you delivering that message and delivering it right up front to educate your clients on what's going on? Uh, back it up by facts. Yep. Um, you know, facts, you need to have that in for the left side of the brain and you need to have the story on the right side yep. of the brain. So you need to have that balancing in your message. Um, I'll say, you know, one message and, and you'll reuse your messages that you've prepared years ago in the market because we go through and so we have yeah. these markets that we come back around to. So right now in the real estate space, obviously, it's communicating with the lack of inventory. It's communicating that there's going to be 15 or 20 offers. It's communicating what they need to do to get their offer accepted, giving them the options and and giving the risk if they they don't and the benefit if they do and then it's up to them to make that decision sure. and it's setting them up as well no matter you can go all in on this but there's a good chance that you're still not going to be chosen for this and that's okay it's not your home there are other homes out there and I'm going to continue to fight for you until we get you into your home so how you communicate that message is, is really important not to get your buyers um, so that they're frustrated in this market for me right now it's what's happening with interest rates and sure. with the feds lowering the prime rate and I'll give you this as we're wrapping up our time together because this will help you as a real estate agent to understand because I've noticed that even a lot of real estate agents don't understand how prime, how prime and mortgage rates work. Definitely consumers don't. And even on the media when you hear, you know, the Fed's lower prime at half a percent, it's time to go out and take a look at mortgage. Well, that makes it seem that mortgage rates are based on what the Feds are doing. And they're not. Mortgage rates obviously are impacted by what the feds do with Prime, but they're not directly tied. What's directly tied to Prime is all your short-term loans. Your home equity line of credits are tied. Car loans are tied. Credit loans or uh, credit cards are tied. But mortgage rates are directly tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond, not the 10-year. The 10-year typically follows close, but it's directly tied to the Fannie Mae 30-year bond. So when the Fed's role is to maintain a balanced market, maintain in in inflation, um, so depending on what the feds do and how that affects the markets are going to determine what the bond market is going to do. So if we have a, a strong economy, then investors are investing in the stock market for a higher return, even though it's a higher risk. Bad for bond market. Right. Opposite. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. Your markets have to balance themselves out. And if there's lack of consumer confidence, then investors are pulling out of the stocks, going into the bond. Bonds are going to trade higher and mortgage rates are going to go down. So who knows what the impact, by the way, we did see the bond and we did see a rate increase today, the first time that we've actually seen, yes, and it's crazy because the bond market was down 30 basis points, but just, which is good. Bond market drops in trading price, that's good for interest rates. Bond market trades higher, it's a higher cost, that's bad for mortgage interest rates. So even the bond market was down this morning, it's what's happening with the bond market in anticipation that the markets move. We had a midday price change in interest rates for the worse which that is the first that we've had in quite a while. So who knows with what the feds do, how it's gonna affect the market, but that's why you wanna work with an expert that can educate and set you up and an expert in the real estate space. Well, I'm grateful for my real estate expertise, but having spent 20 years in the financial industry has yes, gives given me a, a baseline. Big, but I still, like all the tough up. questions, I, I send them yeah, to you. I love for that, sure. Gina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Gina, thank you again so much for spending time uh, with with me and with the listeners of the show today, really appreciate it. Well, thank you for the opportunity. It was yeah, super a little, fun. a little cheers to our cheers coffee with a superstar.
and nope. cheers to you guys. Make it a great day. Best. Make it a successful day. No matter what market you're or what that we're in, you can make it to just be your best self. This is Tina Mitchell, and we're signing off for our coffee with the superstar. We'll be back uh, for my, our next show. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye.